This is one of the hardest things that students find to get their head around is computational thinking. It pops up on nearly every single exam paper and it'll be a big, big part of your testing process. Once you can get your head around this, you'll be able to program things much more easier and you'll understand how to break down problems, which is what you're going to have to do during the exam paper. So I'll try and make this as easy as possible really because sometimes students do struggle with this kind of topic. Basically, there's three different types of computational thinking. Now computational thinking is where there's problems that you go through every single day and your brain does find a solution to these particular problems. There's three different types that we do in computer science. First one is decomposition. We have abstraction and algorithmic thinking. Now each one of these we'll go through in a bit more detail now. The best way for you guys to understand decomposition is to try to use examples. So decomposition is the breaking down of a complex problem into smaller ones which they can then look at individually. For example, when you're at home and you're going to choose a film on Netflix, you go through a series of um, decisions before you actually get to your final choice. So, first thing you could look at is, what genre is the film? Next thing you could look at, what certificate is that film? Third thing you might look at, what is the star rating? So you've broken down that, that particular thing of choosing a film on Netflix, you've broken it down into shorter problems. A lot of real life problems have got bits of information that aren't particularly important, things that you don't really need to know or need to worry about. So abstraction is highlighting and picking out the important bits of information that you can focus on and ignoring all the things that you don't need. So if we stick with our Netflix example, when you're choosing a film, things that you could ignore could be things like the director of the movie, maybe the full plot, you don't want to know the full plot. Uh, the actual picture that they've used to show the movie. Things that you might want to concentrate on a little bit more is maybe the actors in the film. You might favour one particular actor over another. You could look at the ratings, the star ratings. Has it got five stars, three stars, one star? That's obviously quite an important thing. And thirdly, it could be the film length. So sometimes, you know, it's quite late at night. You don't want to watch a film that's on for three hours. So you look at how long the film is. Finally, we've got something called algorithmic thinking. This is the logical way of solving a problem. So it's going through a series of processes in a nice logical structured order to solve a particular problem. Best thing about this is you can adapt it and change it around or revise it to suit other similar problems. So in programming, you might have one particular solution that you could then use again for a different program. If we use our Netflix example, you'd create an algorithm for how to choose a particular Netflix film and then you could use that again for when you go into the cinema because it's a very similar set of choices. As I said earlier on, if we use examples to try and explain the, the particular types of computational thinking, it'll become much, much easier for you to understand. So if we use the Netflix example, but we'll do it specifically for watching a family movie, so first of all, we could decompose the problem into smaller chunks that we can look at individually. And secondly, we can use abstraction where we can ignore all the irrelevant details that we don't need to know. So if we start with decomposition, breaking it down into smaller chunks. So we can narrow down the choices on Netflix. Obviously, there's loads and loads and loads to choose from. So we want to narrow it down first. So the first thing you could do is look at the first problem. What type of movies are there? Secondly, we could look at the times. So what are the times? What are the running lengths of these particular movies? And thirdly, you could look at the reviews, so whether that's the star ratings or whether you go online maybe and look at particular reviews for those movies. So there's three different problems that you look at. So now that you've got the smaller problems, you could look at firstly what type of movies are there. So you you go through all the different genres. They've got action movies, got comedies. You're asking people, what do you actually want to watch? Do you feel like watching a comedy? Do you feel like watching an action movie? That way you could go to the little genre section and go to, go to whatever your whole family feels like watching 
and then you've narrowed down the problems to much much less amount of movies the second problem you could look at the times so that that could be the running length of the movies so you're looking at all the films that are less than an hour and a half maybe because it could be quite late at night or the kids might like lose concentration or whatever and finally uh, you look at the reviews so you've narrowed it down to one particular genre uh, all the films are less than an hour and a half in length and then you want to look at the best one so you go through and narrow it down to all the ones that have got five stars then maybe you could look online and see what the critics are saying about the particular film that way you've gone through loads of different problems small chunks that you can look at one at a time and you've come to a really good solution at the end so if we do a worked example for abstraction basically we need to ignore all the irrelevant information so do the kids even know about directors and actors names i mean they might recognize the odd actor here and there but i doubt they're going to know all the different film directors or really care about who's making the particular film so that's one particular thing we could ignore um, we can't watch it after eight o'clock so we need to focus on the film times start and end times okay and they don't need to look at the full plot of the movie because you'd be there all day if you were looking at the full plot of every single film that you wanted to look at so you could focus on the film ratings instead so if you look at the table at the bottom it shows which information we can ignore and which ones we concentrate instead so we ignore the director and the actors and we focus just on the genre we ignore like unwanted uh, days and times so you go into the cinema we don't want Mondays, don't want Tuesdays, don't want Wednesdays. We only want the day that we're actually going on. And we could focus on the start and the end time of those particular films. Also, we could ignore the in-depth plot because kids don't necessarily care about the full plot of the movie. They might just want to know if it's any good or not. So you focus on the film rating out of 10 or 5 stars. Okay, so finally, if we look at an algorithmic solution, it's basically... A logical solution where you break down a problem and solve it in a logical way so if you think of yourselves sat in a group of your family members and you're trying to decide on a particular film you'd probably narrow it down using a particular process which could form an algorithmic solution so the first thing you could do is you could go to the genre that you all want to watch and you list all the films within that particular genre so you've narrowed it down to i don't know 20 movies then the next thing you could do is get rid of all the films that are adult certificates so 15s or 18s that you can't watch because you've got little kids then the next thing you could do is maybe you've narrowed it down now to maybe five or six films you could delete the ones that have got really poor ratings so ones that have got one or two stars get rid of them okay so now you're left with three films each person in your family could vote on which one they want to watch and the film with the most votes wins. It's a logical solution to the problem. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe. Bye.